So just today, we got another JavaScript front-end framework that got released. Yes, you heard me right. The framework is called New, and it's actually claiming to be a lot better than React, Vue, Next.js, Vite, and a lot of other front-end frameworks. So in this video, I'm gonna look at New, the new awesome front-end framework, and why the JavaScript ecosystem is going out of control by just creating and releasing every single week a new framework for front-end development. So new or Neo, I don't know how to spell that, is literally the new front-end framework that claims to be the trouble solver. And if you just go to the homepage, nuejs.org, which is the official homepage in here, you're gonna find that new is actually a powerful React, Vue, Next.js, Vite, and Astro alternative. I mean, to be able to actually claim this kind of stuff, that this is literally an alternative for all this high-grade framework standing from React to Astro, that's a lot of courage. And it says, it might change the way we develop the web forever. I know there have been like a lot of frameworks before saying the same thing, but it didn't actually move anywhere closer to these frameworks, for example, React or Next.js. But this framework actually looks pretty interesting. If you scroll down a little bit here, you're gonna find a claim that this is literally like a combo box component. This is like the number of lines of code when you build a combo box using React. So 2.5K lines of code versus when you do it using Neo or Neo. I'm sorry how to, like if I'm spelling this wrong, I'm really sorry. But using Neo in here, it's only 200 lines of code. And it has also another really nice comparison in here that it says new JS in here, like new JS when you compare it to like Astro, Nuxt, or Next.js, Gatsby, and Tailwind CSS. This is literally like the amount of HTML and CSS in the homepage right over here. So you're gonna find new or like having only 13K compared to the others if you compare it to, for example, to Next.js, which has almost like 700K like lines of code or like amount of HTML, CSS, and JS or JavaScript in the homepage only which is again another huge advantage. Now, new is not just a small framework or a library, it's literally like an ecosystem. So if you go to like the ecosystem tab in here, you're gonna find like new ecosystem, one of six already done, which is only the new JS, which is the core to build the user interfaces. But if you scroll to be done, like what are the projects and tools that are still in progress and to be done in the future, is like you see new CSS, new MVC, UI, new mark, which is like a markdown stuff, and a new kit. Now you may be wondering, do we ever need another front-end framework now? I mean, we have a lot of them. We have React to Astros, Filt, Vue.js, Angular, and counting and counting. And there's literally tons of others out there that are you know, not really that famous if you compare it to the other stuff. I mean, do we really need that framework? It actually depends. Actually having new frameworks, and as we all know, as we were like having, or as we are all like JavaScript developers, we know that every single week you're gonna find a new framework came out of anywhere or nowhere. A new JavaScript framework just appears, just suddenly appears, and you're gonna accept the way it is. But this is actually a good way because this is actually gonna push the limits of how you can actually do stuff. It's gonna push the limits of like the competition limits of other libraries, it's gonna make sure that it improves other libraries, other libraries authors are gonna just, you know, play hard or work hard to get their libraries pushed into new performance levels and stuff like that. So it's always good to have new frameworks and it's always good to push the limits and push the competition. So I really recommend if you are interested to know more about new in here, you go to newjs.org, you're gonna find the ecosystem, you can find why, and this is particularly very important. So let's get started with new and actually let's go ahead and set up a small teeny tiny demo projects and see exactly how the projects looks like and what is it like to, you know, create a simple application in you. So here I jump to the documentation and go to the getting started and here it actually allows me to install both using button and note. That's pretty interesting start. Second option or first option in here, use the create new, which is like a CLI that allows it to create a new kind of project. So you just go ahead and clone it. You do CD create new and install NPM in here, NPM run start, and you're gonna find a new server on HTTP 8080 port. So there you go. This is actually our project using new and this is literally the project structure. So here you notice that we have an SRC, we have a www folder, we have a script folder and the other normal stuff like configuration stuff or node modules. 
So in this RC in here, we have all of our files, like the layout, the islands in here, like separate components, all of them live in here. And if you just take a quick look into this one, you're gonna find we have a new extension, a file extension, .neo, which says we're using new in here, it uses this particular extension. But if you really open that one in here, and let me just go ahead and choose on VS Code, I'm gonna choose HTML, and if I open that one in here, you're gonna find this is literally just a normal HTML with some teeny tiny changes and new attributes and sort of like script tags inside of the element itself. Cool, right? And the www in here is actually the out, like the generated folder because Neo is gonna take like whatever you put in here is gonna generate it, it's gonna convert it into an index.html in here that's gonna be served, of course, the same thing as the rendering part when you do server-side rendering or when you render on React. That's literally the same thing. And there's like a couple of like scripts in here are gonna be copied. So you don't need to touch this www. The only thing you may touch is the CSS in here. You can change it however you want. And as a clue in here, I already did set up Tailwind with it. So we have like some Tailwind classes in this script, Tailwind utilities, components, and base. So we have Tailwind working with Neo as well. And if you notice in here, we have the Tailwind config.js. And of course, right now, it's still not very, very structured, but it has some sort of structure. So in this components file, you actually do all of your reusable components, and those components are server-side rendered. So it means they have no interaction with the browser. You can't do like on-click or mouse hover or something like that. So they are purely like server-side components, the same way we do with Next.js. So all of yours are gonna be putting some components. Contents in here is an MD or MDX, where you just put some contents and some data, and this content is gonna be made available to all of the components so you can access literally any variable in here for example title or heading or the projects array in here they are all going to be made public and globally available to all the components in here so you can access them however you want for islands in here, the islands are actually, you know, instead of server side rendered or server components, they're like client components. So you can do like on click in here and stuff like that. And I think it's actually a better way to use uh, HTML. So let me just make all of these. So because the extension here is not recognizable just yet. So I just put them in HTML in here as an HTML extension just for the time being. So you can guys see exactly what's happening. And if you're familiar with Vue.js, you're probably gonna find this syntax, this template syntax and how we, things are actually being done in here, super, super familiar because it actually inspires a lot of stuff from Vue.js because Vue.js is one of the simplest kind of front-end frameworks out there that allows you to only deal with HTML, some JavaScript and get great results. So on the new website in here, it has actually a really nice comparison between React and New. And for the comparison in here, you can see the UI components, like UI components comparisons, where we've got a React list box, like a combo box made in React. And this is literally all the code in here just to make a combo box in React. And on the like right hand side in here from Neo list box, this is like the lines of code needed. So if you compare lines of code for Neo, it's two eight lines, while here it's two five hundred or pretty much 2,537 lines, which is, if you just look at it, that's really, really crazy. And you actually, if it, if it click on one of these, actually gonna take you to the headless UI, which is like a React component library in here, and it's gonna take you exactly to the list box in here. So this headless UI ha pretty much has a lot of features, I'm pretty sure, but what I wanted to actually compare is if the new list box in here has literally the same features or not which I hardly guess so because look at that. I mean, this code can't actually get this, the many features you would get in there or the same design or something like that. But I wanted to actually see if that for myself. So what I went through actually and created a simple component in here. So if you go, I did actually, I created the same component in React first and I literally went through and actually created the same exact components in new. So this, basically just a simple select or a combo box in here where you can just like click on it and you can select like a fruit, like an apple or banana or a blueberry or something like that. And here, if you go jump into the bare bones, like the new up in here, I do like, oh, country selection. So if you click on it, it allows you to like select list of countries and you can click, oh, France or Finland or United States. But it's clearly noticed in here, when I click on something in here, I, I get the check mark and everything, but there's actually something wrong with, with Neo in here that maybe the state is not being updated. I couldn't actually figure out how to, to make it basically work because there is a lot of documentation. I did exactly the same as the documentation, but it's still not working. So this must be maybe a bug or maybe I'm just too stupid to use that one. But it should like when you click, it should actually put that in here, fill in. It's actually selecting everything in JavaScript. The only thing in here that's not happening is not updating the UI correctly. 
but we don't care because we're just going to compare the two codes in there because they are literally the same codes and this like the code behind this one should make it work and to make it even simpler for react i actually used like a react component library called chat cn in here just to copy the source code of this selection in here it's literally just going to copy the source code for you and actually put it so if you jump right into this so in here we got like a select.gsx this actually using like radix ui and and being included inside of chat cn so this is literally like what it looks like and this is the number of lines of code actually to make it work uh with everything from like you know the cool awesome design of tailwind css in here to primitives and everything and these are abstracted which means they are being imported so you see this pr selects primitive and like group and value and root all of them are being imported from the redix ui react select which is another awesome library that actually provides those components so that means we don't actually have the full source code. I'm pretty sure if I do have the full source code in here, it's going to be a lot bigger. I didn't want to actually dig into deep into that because I know that's going to be a quite a lot of bigger. But if you actually compare this to Neo, so I go jump back to Neo in here and actually put that inside of islands because this is actually needs an interaction. So I'm going to just go here, make this an HTML and scroll down. So in here you can create as many components as you want. For example, this is a standalone component because a component or always has this attribute which has starts with an at and it has a name so you can name it whatever then later on you can use this name in here for example inside of layout and you can just do uh for example like oh site header and this is literally like the name you need to use so what I did for me, I created this component called, you know, name select drop down. I give it like an ID, a simple class in here because I'm using Tailwind. So that's what I did. And actually I started putting stuff like a UL in here for like the drop down, the button or the trigger button that you click and actually see everything. And here is actually our script because a component should have everything. It should have like the rendering in Neo, should have basically the rendering, like the HTML part of the template in here. And it should have the script included right into it where you run the JavaScript and you can manage like whatever is actually inside of here and here like very easily so simply what i'm doing in here i'm just creating a component i have like this is my you know uh drop down this is like the literally the drop down in here uh where you render stuff and you're into li in here we've got element.label and if you notice in here we are using for loops inside of that one and this template actually re reminds me a lot of like angular js and view as well so like for elements and options and here you can set a value inside of it uh you can do like on click, which is at click in here, like select item. And if you just jump back in here to the bottom, you can do at click as well. You can run a function, like a separate function. And the function in here is gonna be defined right below in here inside of the script section, which I find this syntax a little weird. Um, not a really big fan of it. It just like makes it a little weird, maybe because I'm not used to that kind of stuff. I'm, I'm quite used a lot to React, but still it's pretty simple. So this is literally all the component we needed to create this dialogue that you see right over here on Neo. And literally, if you compare this to the React, you know, select in here or the combo box, the code is literally a lot smaller, like literally a lot smaller. This is like all the code we needed to do. And now for React, even though we use like a separate component library and we just install it and we're using a lot of stuff in here, we we'll still had to type a lot of code. So yes, they are absolutely right, but I'm not a big fan of new, maybe because it's still brand new in here and it's still like the early version whatsoever. I love the features that actually it does provide, but I'm not a big fan of the template and the syntax. It looks pretty ugly and it makes it really, really hard to understand in here. But let's see how it actually goes in the near future. So anyway, guys, thank you guys for watching. This has been another front end JS framework. Anyway, see you guys in the next one.